Right, today I am going to try and make <coughs> a trailer to go behind that mule there and a quad. It's going to be a double axle with four quad wheels, stub axles, four stub axles. This is going to have a bit of a, a ladder construction, yeah? I'm not going to do like bogey axles on it because it's too much of an arse because I want it to be very strong. So what is going to happen here is these stud axles are going to be welded on like that, one on each end. And then as I go progress on, I'll show you how I'm going to put it together. And... Uh, that bale spike over there which is on this side this is going to be cut and made to go on the back of it so when you reverse into a bale with the spike use a little winch then which will be attached to the end to winch the bale off the ground and it should in theory work I know none of you can see how it's going to work at the moment but I will show you how <laughs> I hope it's going to work before long. I'll do another update as I get things welded on. Right, I'm just going to weld one of these stub axles on now. I'm using my little welder, yeah? It's a little arc welder, but it's one of these new ones. It's only a small thing, big as a bloody toaster. But it's a cracking little thing. So if it's a bit of a tip for anybody who's got one of these old big welders, get one of them it'll weld as good as an old as a big old arc weld, welder and easier to use I've put the stub axle on where I'm gonna fix it and I'm gonna tack weld it and weld the stub on one on this end and one on that end and do the same for the other axle and I will let you know I'm getting on then but uh, best to be pretty accurate with these because they need really good wells to be clean them off with the wire brush and try and be, do a very good weld because be a lot of weight you know silage bale all weigh it a ton some of the heavy ones so remember there's only about 100 mil or 4 inches going to be on that seal so if there's any slag or anything on it, chip it out, grind it off and do it again. Better be safe and sorry. So I'll show you how we get on after. Just so I tell you, show you this weld look. Just remember it's only a small little welder, inverter welder, but if you take your time it's surprising what you can do. Look, make sure everything is clean. And if you have a little bit of a slag there, knock it out and just grind it out again that'll fucking hold anything so that's one there now so just three more to do now <laughs> but uh, I'll carry on and I'll show you when I've done this whole one okay like I said there's another axle like that got to be welded on there but look I see I grinded that all off and I'll wire brush it now to make it really clean so you don't get any slag build up but obviously if you've got a MIG welder you can just slap it on but it's better to have it clean with a MIG anyway there we go I'll show you a bit more in the future there's just another tip for anybody okay if they weld them with a stick welder uh, I won't weld this now because I finished this bit but let me just take the earth off always clean the earth Clean it as clean as you clean your everything else. And when you start then to strike up an arc or something, something like this has got a round edge on it. Make one little neat penetrating weld all the way across, across the bottom so it'll dig in. And then knock the slag off and then when you go back next time, start with the, I got the rod there now, and then move slowly and hesitate a little bit at each 
edge so it'll bite in and up the top there but also this is what I tend to do you just go in a small little circle like that as you move hesitate a little bit at each corner each end but then go in a slight hesitate uh, like slight circle as you come back just try and keep that all the way and a constant angle take your time and whatever be clean with everything I make the same mistake myself sometimes you just in a bit of a hurry and you weld something up and it isn't clean and it just looks like crap but there look so you can get a good weld with a stick welder you don't need a MIG so that's my top tip for welding with an arc get everything as clean as possible and get a good first weld where it joins and then you can do a tidy wider weld on the top of that after I got another tip for you I'm no expert welder but I just do a bit of welding on the farm and I've done it for a few years and taught myself you see that white line there if you're marking something on steel it's a hell of a job to see a pencil and everything this is what I use a correction pen it lasts for ages and as long as you keep the end reasonably clean this one's I've added for ages now it'll do a really good mark and it'll stay on there and uh, you can even do a little bit of grinding and it'll stay on but it's a simple way to see a mark because it, it is a job when you've got pencil so this axle is put on now and clamped on ready and I'm just gonna weld this side on so hopefully take my time and another good weld right this is just to show you what I said before about doing a small a tight run underneath you see that rounded corner of them steels are just meeting there do a tight run really good weld as good as you can get it all the way up and that'll hold well then and the next time you come across here you can do a little bit wider with like I've done this side little small little hole with a slag is there but I'll grind that and put a spot in there but that will hold really well so sometimes if you just slap weld on there any old shape it's not it's better to have a couple of really good beads and it'll hold a lot better hopefully <laughs> so I'm no professional but if you're just starting out stick welding it's a, it's a few simple things just go steady and slow and when you get yourself prepared make yourself sure you're comfortable and make sure the lead will move all the way little small things like that and it makes a prepare for your weld if you can if you're going to do that four inches there now make sure that there's plenty of slack in the lead everything is clean your rod has got enough on it to finish the run and then just go slow and steady all the way there and keep your eye on the molten bit just to make sure everything looks okay and the gap and the angle and it'll come naturally after right I hope you can see how this is going to be now I welded the axles on each end of the sorry the stubs on each end of the axles I haven't actually welded this steel together yet I'm just trying to position it I did think of doing like Ford bogey, swinging bogey axles on this thing but I think it's a lot of work really and I don't think it's going to need it as long as this is built strong I guess these tyres should take most of the movement out I hope but uh, we shall see but uh, there's a good bit of work welding here yet and I'm not sure if I'm going to finish it tonight it's going to be dark now miserable outside pissing down right I'll see how I get on here and uh, I'll give you the next update again right everybody this is the finished article this is the bale trailer for the quad or the mule I've just used it to take a big bale and it works perfectly might need to put some mud guards on it but 
Then how can I show you there now what happened? See that winch there? That's attached to there. And back there again, so it gives it twice the pull. And then that spike drops down, you reverse into it, wind the winch back up till it comes back up there, and drive off where you want to go. It took a little bit of figuring out to get things right up with the spike, but I can't believe it works so well and really stable. There's a little bit of cutting and welding there because that spike was off a tractor, so I need to cut them things off there and do something with that. But all the rest is done. A little bit of farting around to do with the hitch, look. I couldn't find a tidy piece of box to do it, so I had to make it out of a thicker angle iron and weld it together. There you are, look, the winch. 16 quid that was. Instead of messing about with a lot of electrics and hydraulics. And it pulls it to no, no problem at all. And it's got a 6 metre strap on it. Simple and strong. So, if anybody's thinking of making one, I advise this method. Didn't lift the back end of the mule up or anything, and I went uphill. Quite a steep place, so. Mind you, it was on, was on the road. So, there you are. Over and out.